Hi everyone. I've been working on a non-toxic, environmentally friendly battery. I built a new variation of a rechargeable zinc iodine battery that has fairly high energy density. I'd like to show you how it was built and demonstrate it operating. The battery is in the form of a pouch cell that uses conductive high density polyethylene as electrode collectors. Here's the anode collector and the cathode collector. It uses this clear non-conductive polyethylene plastic film to separate the two conductive polyethylene electrode collectors. The individual polyethylene components of the cell are fused together with a common impulse heat sealing machine. The cell itself weighs 3.8 grams, takes up a volume of 3.2 cubic centimeters, and has a storage capacity of 69 milliamp hours. The battery uses a zinc metal foil uh, for the anode. It has an activated carbon cathode that has elemental iodine absorbed onto its surface. The battery uses one molar zinc sulfate as the electrolyte. To get an energy dense battery, the cathode and anode need to be as close together as possible, but this can give you problems with zinc metal dendrites forming and shorting out the cell. To suppress this dendrite formation, I use two composite cellulose acetate membranes. The first membrane film is a conductive carbon black cellulose acetate composite that goes between the zinc metal anode and the fiberglass separator. It has a thickness of one and a half thousandths of an inch. I believe this membrane modifies the electric field around the anode and suppresses high field density points on the zinc surface that can promote the formation of zinc dendrites. The second membrane film is a zirconium oxide cellulose acetate composite that goes between the cathode and the fi fiberglass filter separator. This membrane has a thickness of one and a half thousandths of an inch. Zirconium oxide is a very polar molecule with a high dielectric constant and I believe it functions by repelling ions that lead to zinc dendrite formation. The following graphic illustrates how these components are stacked in the cell. I'd like to demonstrate how easily these pouch cells can be stacked in series to get any higher voltage that is needed. These cells at full charge have a voltage of about 1.3 volts. To contain the stack, ce stack cells, I made this lucite frame which uses, a, uses rubber bands to maintain pressure on the stack, ensuring that there's good electrical contact between the cells. These copper foil sheets are inserted between the cells to aid in making good contact and connection to the cell collectors. Now I will stack two of these cells in series to get a voltage of over two volts, the voltage needed to light a typical LED. Okay, so we got our bottom copper collector, our first cell with negative towards the bottom, our next cell, second cell with negative on the bottom, and on the, on the top 
We have the co another copper collector. And then also a piece of lucite plate that helps um, maintain good contact. Okay, now we just secure it with some rubber bands. Now I'd like to connect an LED to the stack cells and see if we can get it to light up. You can see that it lights the LED and it's drawing a current of 3.3 milliamps. Now I'd like to give these batteries a much bigger challenge by connecting an old 2.5 volt incandescent flashlight bulb into the circuit. You can see that it lights the bulb. No problem. And that gives a draws a current of about 200 milliamps. I'd like to give it one more test to show what the maximum current is when dead shorted across the meter. And we get a current of, of uh, 300, over 300 milliamps. Okay, the last portion of this video contains long-term di charge-discharge cycle testing data and graphs for one of these pouch cells. The results of these tests, cycle tests shows that there were no zinc dendrite problems after more than 200 hours of charge-discharge cycle testing. In the beginning of this research, when testing battery cells without the protective cellulose acetate film membranes, I could not get more than five or six cycles without dendrites shorting out the cells. In many of these early tests, the cell would die on the very first charge cycle. At the very end of this video, I have also included some helpful references that show in more detail how the pouch cells are built and how the activated charcoal cathodes are made. Well, that concludes my demonstration in this video. I'd like to thank you for taking an interest in my work and watching this video. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have about it in the comment section. Bye till next time.